Learn Abacus at Home, Step-by-Step -step Abacus Tutorials. In this lesson, we will solve simple math questions using upper beads and lower beads on the abacus. So let's start with a simple question. 2 plus 5 plus 2 minus 5. Now I know you can do this in your head easily, uh, but as you know, we're here to eventually develop the ability for the child to do difficult questions in their head. And before we can develop that ability to visualize, children have to learn how to use the abacus. And to get there, we have to first learn how to solve simple questions, like the one you see here on the abacus, before moving to more complex questions. Now that was a very long-winded way of saying, let's learn how to solve this on the abacus. I'd like to point out a couple of things right off the bat. As we saw earlier, a bead is counted in the answer only when it touches the answer bar. That's why from the zero position, zero position being where none of these beads touch the answer bar, when adding, you're moving beads towards the answer bar, and when subtracting, you're moving them away from the answer bar. All right, with that in mind, let's begin. Two plus five plus two minus five. Answer is four. Let's do that again. Two, we're moving it towards the answer bar because we're adding. Add five, move it towards the answer bar again because we're adding. Plus two, move them towards the answer bar, minus five. Move it away or take away from the answer bar. The answer is four, okay? Now let's clear the abacus and work on another question. Let's do two plus five plus two minus five minus three. Now, this time, I'd like you to pay attention to the fingers that we use to move the beads. So for the lower beads, when adding, we use our thumb to push them up towards the answer bar. And we use our pointer to move them away from the answer bar. So for the lower beads, we add with the thumb and we subtract with our pointer fingers. For the upper beads, we add with the pointer and we take away with the pointer as well. So the only time we're using our thumb is to push the lower beads up towards the answer line or to add using the lower beads. For everything else, we use our pointer to either move the beads towards the answer bar or move them away from the answer, bias, answer bar. So let's, let's pay attention to how we're using our fingers to solve this question on the abacus. So here we go. So let's do two plus five plus two with our thumb, minus five with our pointer, minus three with our pointer. The answer is one. Let's do this again. Two with our thumb, plus five with our pointer, plus two with our thumb, minus five with our pointer, minus three with our pointer. The answer is one. Okay, now we know that you could use any finger to actually move the beads and still get the same answer, but it's important for students to follow the recommended technique. Consistent use of this technique builds muscle and brain memory that helps the child better visualize bead movement when developing mind math abilities. Now, if your student is five or six years old, or not yet fluent reading and writing two-digit numbers, focus only on the single-digit practice worksheets with this lesson. However, if your student is seven years or older, they should complete both the single-digit and the double-digit worksheets. Now, we can't leave here without solving at least some questions with two-digit numbers. So let's do this here. Let's do 12 plus 5 minus 15 plus 52 minus 1. There we go. So 12. So 10 and 2. So one bead in the tens column and two beads in the ones column. Plus 5 with my pointer. Minus 15, since we're subtracting, we use our pointer. Plus 52. Plus 52. Minus 1 with my pointer. 
the answer is 50 and 3. 5, 3, 53. Okay, let's do that again. 12 with our thumb plus 5, adding with the pointer because it's the upper beats. Taking away 15, so we're taking away the 10 with our pointer because the lower beats you subtract with the pointer. Minus 5 again with your pointer because for the upper beats you always use your pointer. Plus 50. 2 minus 1. The answer is 53. Easy enough? Alright, so by now you've probably noticed that we're, we haven't worked with numbers that contain 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now that's very astute of you if you've noticed that, but we'll be working with them in the next lesson. But please, before you move on to the next lesson, make sure you complete the practice worksheets in this lesson. Again, remember, there are no shortcuts. See you in the next lesson where we'll learn how to use both upper beats and lower beats together and work with numbers that contain 6, 7, 8, and 9. Thanks again for watching.